everyone, this is Leslie with Color Art. Yes, I've been gone for a few days. I have been mixing colors right here in the studio for production and taking bins of powders down there for them to fill. So, kind of had my hands full. What you're looking at is a cradle board. One, I think the very second one I did, I don't think I ever showed the video of this. This one I used way too much stone coat white, way too much stone coat black. It, uh, it just, well, you guys might think it's pretty. It just wasn't pretty, and it's a board. I'm just funny about cradle board, actual piece of cardboard. This is not a regular canvas, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do a second layer in just some seagrass green and a little bit of aqua. Sorry, I'm away from the camera because I'm going to show you something in a second. So I'm going to do not necessarily a flood coat. I don't know if that's the terminology, but I'm kind of going to do a control swipe here. I don't know if I'm going to have to do it in two to three stages. I want a section across here, a section across here. The main color is just going to be my seagrass green, a little tiny bit of aqua. Um, this is called African Sky. I have a bit of the black stone coat only just to help me if I have to create some patterns. I'm looking for three blocks because then I'm going to do a third layer on top of this. I also have some clear if I run out. Now what happened the other night was actually very exciting and I did end up filming uh, the second one. So. I'm going to show you and I'll see if I can get something to cover this. I don't want to. I have those little popsicle sticks out so I can block out my area <laughs> so my eye can see it. But I'm going to just put the paper towel on top. So what you're looking at is one of my tiles that I had done a test on and I had this I had tested the seagrass green, so this original tile was simply all seagrass green. That was the first layer. Oh, there's something white in here. I think I got a little white stone coat, so just kind of have to ignore that for a second. Um, and what I did was I had this wild idea of what if I could tint the stone coat white, or shall I say tint one of my colors with little drops of stone coat white so I could make a light coral that would do my selling. So when I turned the camera on, I had just poured this. I think I heated this too much with the gun. You will see a video of this complete from beginning to end. I don't think I have my phone in here to show you guys the sparkle, but you can see the iridescence, especially in these cells across the top, okay? And this was another tile that I had tested the seagrass green and some black and some, some of the dragon gold. So that was the first layer. What's so nice, and by the way, I did this with art resin for everybody who want to know what resin I worked with because I know someone was asking me about to use art resin. What I really like is I don't mind if I had a second layer on this. I don't need to put a flood coat on this to um, make it look flat. This actual texture here is really, really elegant. So I was just in a, I was just in kind of a fall harvesty mood. So I mixed up some of the golden autumn brown with a little ginger, spiced ginger in it because I wanted to warm it up, and then just some regular spiced ginger, blushing lily, and mixed some of the blushing lily with the uh, stone coat white to make that pinky coral and I got cells when I swiped over the top of it. Oh, I'm loving this this cast that we're getting here, this changeable cast that we're getting here. Anyway, by the time I'm showing you this, you would have already seen the little video how I did it. It'll explain why I'm going to do this back green background on this uh, wooden canvas that we're going to repurpose. I'm going to do a larger version of what I just did on the tile, but in order to do that, I need a base coat on something. I knew I was going to ruin my little pattern here, but I just want to have an idea in my mind what I'm going to do first. And so 
Let me get these little pretty tiles out of the way. I don't want to get anything on them. <clears throat> I've never actually done this, but it can't be that hard to put more resin on top of something. I have some spatulas here too. So, since I mostly want it to be just this one color, I'm just going to lay a little bit of both of these on here. I know that the resin's going to go up to this area. It'll move up here as I'm moving it around, so I don't really want to And normally, <clears throat> with the stone coat, you're going to swipe over the top of the stone coat. The thing is, is to get the cells in the stone coat, you, it, like I just said, you've got to swipe the color over the stone coat, not the other way around. You don't swipe the color, I mean, the stone coat over the color. So, we'll see if I just blew it by doing that. This is a... Uh, this, my, this is my piece and I have the option to change it. Yeah, and then what I've been doing is something with clear, pushing it back. So I get a little bit of clear next to this stone coat. Something I've been doing on the tiles. More of this here. Sorry, I'm thinking this out loud right in front of you guys, but that's kind of how things happen. Again, this is mostly just a base coat, so it's not like I'm going to try to get some kind of special pattern. I, I'm going to be doing a pattern on top. I just don't want this to look flat, like just straight plain green. It'd be nice to have just a slight subtle variation. So. drawing a little clearer so I have a tiny bit of lubrication in between where I have my holes. Warming up the clear. second coat I'm going to have a lot more control. I'm not going to have this paint just going everywhere where I want it, going any willy-nilly way. It's kind of neat that by putting that clear on for lubrication, of course, the colors underneath are working. But I want to create a specific line. I'm going to tilt this up just a little bit, see if I can get that green up into there. Not, I might need to add a little bit of green right there. I kind of don't like this little stir stick to add color. Yeah, I'm just finding my own way here.
Oh wow, look at those colors coming through. The pale hot pink coming through. It's kind of giving me a rainbow effect. <laughs> Oops. Okay, now I'm having too much fun combing. Sorry. It's really not what I intended to do. I want something smoother than that, so I'm going to have to fix that. But I kind of got lost in <laughs> this. Uh, oh, wow, it's going to be hard to show you guys. And this is wood, so it's even harder. That. Uh, this area here, you can start to see the other colors coming through, like little bits of the pinks coming through. But uh, I really want this more of a... I'm liking that texture here, though. Something smooth. Well, that works really nice. I just got really nice over my edge. It just slid right over the edge perfectly. Remember, this is a base coat. So I slip in that popsicle stick right at the edge. Oh my god, it painted the side perfectly for me. <laughs> yeah, this green's pretty intense. I might have to paint, accent this with a little bit of black acrylic before the next layer goes on. Let's see if I've got some of this green. I'd sure like to put it back up here if I can get some of that green back up here in that area. And I don't care if it doesn't look perfect. Again, this is just a background texture. Well, we have a lot of glare on that. Boy, is that green. But remember, I'm putting something on top of it that's going to be really bright and coral, so wow. That's crazy electric green. Never done this, but how hard can it be? Million dollar question gets us into trouble, but hey, I can try. <laughs> okay, so what do I want to do now? I do want to do the whole thing, but I want a little bit of black down here, just a, a tiny bit, just to give that section a little bit of degree of separation. See if I can't swing that lamp around every time I get going here with my shiny surface. My lamp on top causes that glare. That's a little bit better. Well, I gotta get brave here sometime. So. And 
this one. Let's see. I have more color, I mean more resin if I need to make more color. This one I want a little bit more turquoise up here. That green's really, really, really in your face right there. much of this stuff just enough for effects. It's pretty, but gotta be careful. And then same thing, I like the effect of that clear. I need to put some of that in a little bit of cup. I like these little paper cups I can squeeze and then it's also better the environment to be using paper. And not so much plastic. I'm just kind of filling in the gaps where the holes are here.
I'm just kind of like moving it in. So I've got my three sections. I'm going to end up with my uh, martyr section here. So what I did is I put some of the African sky seagrass, a little bit more African sky, some clear. As I started to heat, I poured off all the rest of the uh, African sky I could down here just to kind of break this up a little bit. Um, putting the clear in here and then pushing the color and the clear over the black and then pushing it back in, I'm getting these really cool cells. I don't know if you can see them. Some of this black that I remember was from the, the piece below that first layer. But you can see where we're getting this transparent lacing. Now, I'm not sure how much I want that white. There's also white in here to pop through. So while I can still fix it, I might just have a little play with what looks like white little cells and kind of drop little bits of this teal in there if I can get away with it. <laughs> Obstacle stick, I don't know. We're just looking for interesting, cool patterns. I'll warm it up so it looks like it belongs, but this is just a backdrop. I'm going to be doing those fall colors on top in some kind of foliage shape. I haven't decided yet. So I just need something a bit more interesting than just straight green or straight black or just some kind of variation of the color of background, but still make it somewhat subtle. I'm going to warm up what I just put down there. So what's kind of cool, and I know it's, I can't move it around right now and show you, boy, that green's looking real yellow over that white, isn't it? Wow. Um, that's kind of a little bit too, uh, too, too, too. What I was going to say is, I can't get a close-up of it yet for you, but the clear, Floating over the other colors gives you such a nice illusion of a second layer lacing on top of itself. Give me a second. I didn't like that white popping through that much. Keep calling it that, I'm sorry, African Sky. Pull that in there, which is really the color I wanted to kind of dominate in this section anyway. And it's kind of keeping it away from my other little block, which isn't bad. I don't know about getting you a close-up at this time. I can try, I know this just looks kind of blah blue. You can't really sell, see the texture in that clear just yet. You will when it's dry. I'll give you a good gander of when it's dry before I do that next layer. Get these sides picked up here. I'm going to get all my sides touched up with this green that I just tilted off. I didn't plan on tilting anything off, but I did. So I might as well use it. Don't waste it. I 
and let this little area here sort of feel like it's setting up, even though I know I'm going to do that last section. I don't know what that was. is going to be exposed. There's not going to be foliage right here. Come on, give me some African sky right here. Just a, just a little variation. It's kind of changing. While that light is still glaring on it. Okay, I'm going to twirl this around and I'm going to have to swap off my gloves. Get these off. Get the camera out. As far as it'll let me out. Okay, so we need to move this back a little bit. That way, because you're just catching the tail end of this and the tail end of that, and I want the whole piece in the camera. I think I pushed it forward when I was fixing the edges, didn't mean to. It is on plastic, so in theory, as long as I have my cups of resin off of this, I should be able to just simply slide the plastic that it's sitting on towards me. And Ba -ba -ba. Yes, we can. Okay, another little tip. If you're sure that all the resin down here that's gone is you're not going to use. And of course, I've had people say mop it up. But I didn't realize this, but when I sat a paper towel down underneath the tile once, picked it up the next morning, the paper towel, plain old paper towel, picked up the resin right off the plastic. The plastic was 100% clean again and I could use it <coughs> again on camera. I know you guys aren't necessarily worried about having something on camera, but I can go through a lot of plastic. And this makes it so just a little bit of paper is gonna peel off that, this resin after it dries. And I can recycle this thing and reuse this thing. So, you're wondering why I'm doing this, that's why. Okay, plus, it's less chance for me to get it on my arms. It's right here in front of me. All right, I need some more of the green. And I need some more of that seagrass green in African Sky. My little jar of African Sky is just a little sampler jar out of the batch. So I don't have the fancy bottle. But I do have a nice, big, beautiful jar of the seagrass green. Of course, you can see that. Here's a better label so you can see the product in the video. That's a pretty label. You can tell I love my seagrass green because it's all mucked up already. I use it all the time. Ooh, I'm liking what's happening here. That's going to create an interesting background. Remember, we're just doing a subtle turquoise and seagrass green background with a little bit of black and some colors that have popping through. I still have some clear left. I reserved so I didn't over mix just in case I didn't want to use too much but I also didn't want to not have enough. You've never seen it mix. It's a quick mix formula. She's already ready and pretty. We'll, we'll keep stirring it to show you how pretty it is in the camera but that's how quickly that seagrass green mixes. Here's the African sky. And I do put the powders on top. I know typical mica powders, you put them on the bottom, it's going to poof up. It's not going to happen with the, the resin art. It dissolves. As soon as it hits that resin, it starts breaking down. So it's actually a dry epoxy paint. I know that sounds crazy, but it is. It's a paint system without 
all the other stuff in it. And she usually get Okay, so I'm just kind of straighten out my little thingy here. So I think probably to carry this straight up, I'm probably going to need some kind of black, something to contrast against that teal. Of course, this black right here already is. Maybe I don't want it eating into the color. I want it to just kind of be there as an accent. Like I said, I could, in theory, not try to do this in one layer, but take some acrylic paint and touch up this area right here to just kind of make it look like it's been aged. That it's old, that it's an actual painting. I just laid a little tiny bit of black down. I'm not pouring it directly next to it. Ooh, that's a big area. I'm going to run out of paint. It's a good thing I have plenty more clear, huh? up some more African sky. Don't worry, this isn't all. I've got some in my drawer. I just had pulled some out of the glass lab batch. Plus, I make it. I can always cook it more. Sorry for making that joke there, but I can always get more. I like it here, but because that is so green, as I started going up, I want a little bit more up there, too. But it's so green on that end. I want to kind of map out some of the teal here. If you guys have ever watched me do my acrylic pores, you know, <laughs> I like to swipe and I like to control the color, which isn't always possible, but I can try. Okay, I don't have much green left either. I wonder if I've got enough here. I really do. Well, a little bit more green. I have plenty of teal down. Let me get my seagrass. That is the beauty of the resin art. It, it does dissolve very quickly. I've got to mix more right away. I'm not worried about my time. You know, we got a great review on the... Oh, it was the one I did the tiles with the blue moon. Some, some wonderful fans said that because this mixes so quickly, uh, she has no trouble using her stone coat quick coat, which begins setting up in 20 minutes. She saved all the time for mixing. Here we go. Now we got plenty of green in there. Not sure where I'm going to put my black other than I need some in there. I'm not going to just go straight green in blue, but not that much. I'd rather have it in some places and not in others at all. Okay, now a little clear. I have a cup of clear here somewhere. So we can blow it back over. Let's hope this works out. I'm praying and hoping this piece comes out nice. So I'm just kind of filling in all the holes with a little bit of clear. So we got enough lubrication in here to move these colors. <clears throat> Looks like they're already making their way in here. So whether we like it or not. And I'm going to be pushing the color this way.
I'm pouring everything I've got in here now, kids, before I get this going. On the last leg here. So. I saw a little divot there that I wanted to push over, so I knew how to color there. Same thing here, a little divots here I want to push over. I like this, which I know you can't see all that lacing, but this feels a little bit messy for what I was going for. So I know part of me kind of wants to boy. I don't want to swipe that's too hard. This thing's gonna pull all that paint up. We don't want that. So the only other option is what I was doing on this bottom half here. When I got this texture, I just took the popsicle stick and just let it skim right over the top. I know it's brave, there's going to be parts you guys are going to say, oh, I like. But for the look I'm looking for, same thing here, I'm just going to sit and lay that popsicle stick down and just. I'm barely even touching it and letting it pull all that color over the side. That's kind of interesting here. I like that little extra thingy I got. This I don't mind actually. I'm liking what's happening here. some of that color run down into that black in that first area that we did. Let's see how much it will actually... Sorry for turning this around. I might be able to get my leverage on here without getting my arm into it. I feel like if I can tilt it this way, I can see... Ooh. Oh, oh my god, I'm liking what's happening here. That is, oh, that's so pretty. Unexpected pretty. Okay, so I'm going to do some kind of foliage treatment with all those warm colors, but I need some kind of random greenish aqua background, which is thus the African sky. I kind of don't want to touch this. Unless there's little pits in here somewhere. 
This is very interesting. I'm finding this very, very, very interesting. I could see, I think, all kinds of stuff on top of this. Of course, I don't want to screw it up. <laughs> it's the first thing I'm going to think of is, oh no, the next code. Am I going to mess it up? <sighs> Get any kind of runaway resin I've got here on the sides while this is drying. Yeah, I could even see just adding. Oop, I've got a bubble to pop in a sec. I could see uh, just, I don't know, adding all kinds of different stuff on top of this. This is a nice background. Okay, so I'm just popping any bubbles, so we're going to have to let this cure for a few hours. <clears throat> but today is art resin. That's the resin I'm using. My big old bottle here, we're using art resin for the resin, stone coat for the black. Hope you've enjoyed this uh, interesting random abstract base coat. Um, over the top of one of the first pieces, I didn't really like how it turned out. Uh, using the, gotta wipe it off or I'm gonna ruin this jar too. Uh, resin Art Lester Pigments, Art Resin, the Stone Coat Black. See you guys in a few hours after this has a chance to dry because we're gonna do the next layer after that.